Hello, my name is Jill Berry Bowen, CEO of Northwestern Medical Center and your host of the NMC Health Beat Show, dedicated to discussing hot healthcare topics. Our goal is to provide you with some great education on available services and help you become a more informed consumer of healthcare. With healthcare reform upon us, there are challenges and opportunities to face as a community. In partnership with community providers, we take great pride in serving Franklin and Grand Isle counties and want to be your trusted healthcare resource as we transition the healthcare delivery system. Today, we welcome Dr. Rob Beatty, who is a surgeon with Northwestern Orthopedics. Dr. Beatty specializes in arthroscopic joint surgery, and he also has an interest in sports medicine. And I understand, too, that he has worked as an orthopedic surgeon for both the Canadian ski team and the Ottawa Rough Riders before beginning practice in Vermont. I know you will all agree that Dr. Beatty has taken wonderful care of this community for the past 22 years. So Dr. Beatty, thank you for being here um, today and to talk about arthroscopy and what that means. I know there's some confusion about it or when to get that type of surgery. So maybe first uh, describe to us what is arthroscopy? Arthroscopy is a surgical procedure which is done minimally invasively that involves the use of a camera attached to a scope which we place into the joint. When we first started arthroscopy it was just an arthroscope with a light source and you actually had to put your eye on the eyepiece to look inside the joint and then it evolved to the use of a video camera so that it's attached to a monitor so everyone in the room can see what you're seeing which really facilitated the evolution of the procedure but allows you to look inside the joint through small incisions uh, and that way you can initially it was just to see pathology to make a diagnosis mm -hmm. and over time it evolved into a procedure that not only can you diagnose but you can treat so you're using a camera an arthroscope and additional accessory portals for small instruments that you can pass into the joint to perform surgery. That sounds really complicated, um, what you're doing, but is it, how long does it take if someone's thinking about that surgery? The procedure itself uh, depends on the joint you're doing. It, it all started off with knee surgery, uh, and knee arthroscopy is generally less than an hour, mm -hmm. uh, but it has evolved to other joints. Uh, the knee was first followed by the shoulder and then elbow and ankle and then into smaller joints. The, the knee scope is a uh, four millimeter arthroscope but there's a 2.9 millimeter arthroscope that you can use in smaller joints so uh, wrist and even the big toe uh, wow. have been arthroscoped, um, <laughs> oh some gosh. tailored joints. So there's a, a variety. There's even uh, arthroscopy of the uh, temporomandibular joint of the jaw. So there, it has evolved. Wow. Uh, to allow you to look in a variety of joints and if you're doing something like the hip it's a much longer procedure because there's a lot of setup it's more complicated and it takes longer to do so it's qu it's quite a range Wow I didn't realize all of that you think about you know hips knees and shoulders but then you talk about the, the toe uh, that's uh, that's quite interesting so how would I know if I needed one of those so what type of patients um, require something like that well Typically, uh, patients are referred by their primary care provider for evaluation, and we go through a series of steps, uh, history, physical, x-ray, and there are certain constellations of symptoms and patterns that lead one to think that they may have an internal derangement of the joint, and sometimes you can make that diagnosis clinically on the basis of uh, history, physical, x-ray, and sometimes you need to add further diagnostic imaging with something like MRI or arthro MRI where we put some dye in the joint in addition to getting the MRI and that can allow us to have a better appreciation of what's going on in the joint before surgery uh, so that it's not a purely diagnostic arthroscopy what's going on you mm -hmm. pretty much know what's going on beforehand and the arthroscopy is more the definitive treatment sometimes it is truly exploratory where you're not sure what the diagnosis is uh, and the arthroscopy diagnoses and allows you to treat it. Other times 
you know ahead of time what you think it is and there are surprises. Ultimately, arthroscopy is the definitive for diagnosis. MRI is very good, mm -hmm. but uh, when you are looking in living color and you can not only look but probe the tissue, uh, we call it a look and hook, uh, <laughs> if you will, uh, it allows you a more accurate diagnosis. And with the evolution of the instrumentation that is available, it allows you to treat much more today than when we were once able to treat. Right, great. So, you know, um, the population you're serving, they may be still working population. So what can you expect for recovery period or how do you prep the patient for the experience both before and after? So once we've gone through the diagnostics and have a good sense of what the problem is and we're planning on an arthroscopy, we go over the procedure with the patient, explain the, the steps involved, go over the risks and complications. Uh, and then discuss with them the post-operative plan, the expectation for outcome, so that they have a pretty good sense of what's going on. Um, if it's a simple procedure like a torn meniscus, uh, one of the most more common procedures is the medial meniscus. And uh, an arthroscopic partial medial meniscectomy uh, certainly takes well under an hour to do, uh, probably a half hour of surgery time, but there is some setup and takedown, so overall close to an hour. And they would be uh, on crutches for a couple of days afterwards. Okay. They would progress their weight bearing as tolerated and usually off work for two or three weeks. Um, sometimes they're back to work sooner if they're self-employed and they're very motivated. It's, it's more pain and swelling based uh, because it's mechanically sound to initiate weight bearing and progress activity. If they overdo it, they'll have a little more swelling, so that's what we, we have to pull in the reins sometimes because they're anxious <laughs> to get going. I bet. Just yeah. so that they don't uh, overdo it and have the swelling, but their, res their recovery can be very smooth. So what about the pain level um, right after surgery? And so how do you know if you're doing too much after surgery? So how would you describe the pain and what should folks expect around that? Typically, uh, we'll have them on an anti-inflammatory and a pain medication usually a mild to moderate pain medication. They're usually not using it for very long. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, pain is a very individual thing, and so there's quite a variety in individual pain responses and how much medication they might need, but the majority use very little, uh, maybe for the first few days and taper right off. Uh, we do start them on physical therapy early, within okay. the first few days, mm -hmm. uh, and they're usually in physical therapy for two or three weeks uh, for something as simple as an arthroscopic partial medial meniscectomy. Or there are a variety of procedures though, and some of them are more complicated, more prolonged, and uh, for example, in the shoulder, a rotator cuff repair involves a relatively long recovery process. Mm -hmm. The rotator cuff has poor blood supply, the biomechanics uh, of the shoulder are different, and so it's a, it only heals at a rate of about 10% a month. So if you calculate that out, you're talking <laughs> about a long recovery. Sure, sure. Wow. Okay, so the population, uh, when we look at the statistics about the population, you know, the baby boomers are getting older. So talk a little bit about the population that you're serving, and what would you recommend for folks to, to stay healthy? Well. Arthroscopy applies to those that are, have not developed significant osteoarthritis. Once you get to uh, an arthritic joint, the benefit of arthroscopy declines significantly. Okay. Now, so typically for arthroscopy, you're talking about young athletes, middle-aged weekend warriors, uh, and, <laughs> and uh, when we get into our 60s and 70s, as the joints may have deteriorated to the point where there's loss of joint space, uh, there is a increased failure rate for arthroscopy. So we tend to avoid it in that scenario. And then you're talking more arthroplasty or joint replacement. Uh, but uh, when there's still good joint space, whether it be a shoulder, hip, knee, or other, uh, if the joint space is good and there's a mechanical problem, mm -hmm. it can often be addressed arthroscopically. And in terms of uh, uh, trying to uh, stay healthy and stay fit, I think that uh, early on we're often involved with the high impact, pivotal activities that are associated with uh, greater injury rates. Uh, and 
sometimes we get over those and they sort of rear their head down the line and when they've been doing fine for a number of years but that old injury comes mm -hmm. back to haunt them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that joints are made to move, they want to move, but in someone that's had prior injury, uh, low impact activities, uh, cycling, swimming, Nautilus, uh, going to the uh, gym to, mm -hmm. uh, for weights, stretching exercises are all of benefit to the joint. It's the high impact, heavy twisting that tends to be associated with a greater injury rate for the joint. But uh, someone that wants to use their uh, Concept 2 rowing machine or they're on their exercise bike or they're going out for a ride, those low impact smooth activities are actually very good for the joints. Great. That's great. So what other things do you um, do um, at uh, Northwestern Orthopedics? Well, my main love is arthroscopy uh, and I <laughs> enjoy uh, that, but I also do uh, total hips, total knees, and total shoulders. Uh, and r some revisions, uh, the revision rate is low, but uh, uh, we do occasionally do r revisions. Um, they are very satisfying procedures because they have a high success rate with good relief of pain. Uh, joint replacement surgery is, r is really not for motion and strength as much as, as it is for pain relief. And with that in mind, it's, uh, they're, they're very successful. So you've been doing this for 22 years in Vermont. So what keeps you excited about it? I mean, you, you talk with such passion. I love it. So um, what keeps you going? I think it is the satisfaction of outcomes. So, you know, in this setting, uh, we're not in a big teaching setting, and so uh, we're not uh, uh, constantly uh, uh, involved with uh, young uh, residents, but periodically we do have them come through. But it's the constant evolution of learning. I feel like I'm a perpetual student. <laughs> e even though I've been in this for a long time, uh, I love going to the meetings, I love going to uh, uh, rounds, uh, and the ability to then take that information, apply it to your patients, and relieve them of their problem. Mm -hmm. And typically, the most common problem in orthopedics is pain. We have other problems. We have loss of motion, we have loss mm -hmm. of strength, we have uh, lack of stability, uh, instability symptoms, but pain is the single most common presenting feature. And it's very satisfying to relieve someone's pain. And uh, the evolution of the technical elements of arthroscopy, the technical elements of joint replacement surgery uh, have allowed a significant improvement in outcome over the last two and three decades that has increased the satisfaction of the work we do. So it's, uh, arth I love a day of, uh, of arthroscopy and, uh, or joint replacement uh, surgery uh, because the, the patients tend to do very well. When you see them back in the office, they're appreciative and thankful. So it's, uh, uh, it's, a wor it's work that's it's very satisfying. Yeah, we can definitely see that. And when I see you in the hallways, you've got a big smile and watch you do <laughs> surgery, you've got a big smile. And I also want to uh, certainly tell our viewers that there was a day when there was a, I think it was a blizzard. And uh, we were wondering if the patients show up. The patients always show up, right? And there's Dr. Beatty. Um, you skied in. You actually skied in to see your patients and you're biking in. So you're clearly a role model um, of, of fitness. And so um, I think that's wonderful um, that you're here in this community and people just love you. So I wanted to be able to say that to you as well, that you're so well thought of um, in our community. So thank you for serving our community in orthopedics and, and being there for folks. Thank you very much. Yeah. So this is uh, Jill Berry Bowen. I'm the CEO of Northwestern Medical Center. And it's been a real pleasure to be here talking with Dr. Beatty about various things around bone health, joint health. And so uh, make sure that you're out exercising and that you stay healthy as well. And I will catch you next time on NMC Health Beat.